Hello, welcome back to my channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Today, we are going to be talking about my experience of the Open University Day School for module TM257, which is the Cisco networking. Um, I will be going through what the timeline for the day was, how I found the work, what sort of equipment we worked with, um, going briefly over what we did. I won't be going over any of the actual like coding, etc., because I don't want to get in trouble with OU. Um, I don't think they would because I'm pretty sure they change it every single time there's a day school and it's past this year's, well, this term's day school anyway. Um, it was The last day was on the Sunday just gone from recording. So I should be okay, but still, I'm not going over it. And if not, I'd just be here for like forever anyway, even if I did. I went to Northumberland College for my day school. Um, for anyone who hasn't done a day school before, you get a long list of different places basically to the venues up and down the country including Northern Ireland and Scotland and Wales obviously um, you get a couple of venues and then you, you basically book yourself onto whichever one you want um, I chose Northumberland College because I can't drive so I needed my mum and stepdad to take me anyway so I basically picked whichever one they would prefer to go for the day <laughs> and they chose there and plus we have a family friend who owns a place nearby so it made it easier because we stayed over the night before so we wasn't setting off at like six o'clock in the morning so yeah anyway so you get a long list of venues you pick whichever one you want and then off you go so on the day of the day school um it started off at nine o'clock which was nine till nine fifteen for registering basically just people just turning up that's all it was um i think when i turned up i literally just turned up said to him who i was said to the said to him said to my teacher or lecturer of the day um, who I was, he checked me off the list and then that, we sort of sat down and kind of all like talked amongst ourselves and then he briefly introduced what we're doing today um, while we're waiting for other people to turn up and he let me have a look at the practical area which is where all the equipment was um, just to basically so I could get a quick look at it and familiarise myself with it and then afterwards we yeah, sat down in 915. We got into groups of three. We had one group of two. Um, that was mainly because we were supposed to be 11 of us, I believe. But three didn't turn up for various reasons. So there was only eight of us. Um, so we had like two groups of three and one group of two. So, yeah. That's why. So I was in a group of three. Um, your first task for in a group is basically just setting up the equipment so on my on the day you're given a topology and then you're given access to whatever you need to, to complete that topology in this case it was three routers one switch four computers if you need to but you only needed three but it did help to have four to be fair and we had access to four and um, there was an abundance of computers so that was good so we had four computers three routers, one switch, and then straight through cables to connect all the um, routers, etc. And we had serial cables to interconnect the routers. Um, so yeah, that was that. It was like the first hour and a half. Um, the lecturer could help you if you needed help. There wasn't any assessment on that part of the day. Um, you basically just plugged in the right bit of the cable into the right socket. And then on the computer, went into putty to access the console um, and just set up the routers and give them names etc it literally lists off I've got the pack here I have the pack here and it literally just like lists off the commands that you need to do for various routers that you had um, so it was very straightforward I don't think anyone needed help um, the only way you could have really messed up is if you put the serial cables in the wrong way because um, one end was DCE and the other one wasn't so you possibly could have messed up that way but even if you did, the, like I said, the lecturer could have helped you on that day it helped you at that point um, in essence, he could have fully set it up if he needed to but no one needed help and I think after you've done this much of the course I think most people are prepared enough to do that and it's, like I said, it's just following instructions so that was very easy that was from 9.15 to quarter to 11 and then we had a short break and then 
part two of the day happened, which was like a three hour chunk of time. And in that three hour chunk of time, you have like five set tasks um, to do within your group. You have access to NetCAD, which has all these Cisco stuff if you've been doing the course. Um, you can access your notes if you brought your notes. Um, you can obviously confirm within your team. The only thing is that the lecturer can't I can't help you as such. He can give you like open-ended remarks basically saying like if you say what you're doing and it's gone wrong he'd say well maybe you need to think of another thing you know maybe you need to think of another way of setting that up. Um, you can't really point you in any direction um, which is fair enough because this is an assessed part. Um, he has like I said each section there's five parts um, and then each section has a certain amount of marks and then you get marked by the tutor he just comes over um, and conf well, confirms it by doing a couple of commands like show IP routing table etc like that and yeah so that was that um, that was the three hour one The I will quickly go over what we what the actual questions were So task one was fairly straightforward. It was about setting up a RIP v2. Um, yeah, it gives you a list of gives you a list of networks that you need to add to the RIP, and that's that. That was five marks. Um, task two is about setting up root on a stick. Um, it gives you a couple of VLANs to set up, um, a couple of sub interfaces, and couple other instructions. Like I said, I'm not going to go through it all because I don't want for you to be completely annoyed. Um, if anyone did up, did a day school um, for this year, they had access to this like long before the day school. So um, it's not really like giving anyone an advantage. Anyone that could do this day school could have done that. Um, task 3 turned out to be the hardest task actually that I think everyone in our class like struggled with the most, which was standard ACLs. Um, I think, I think with the like, what the lecturers said that they didn't really, it was really straightforward, but because of the setup, it wasn't like immediately easy to confirm that you set it up correctly, basically. Um, so yeah, it was it was all right. I think we all got it, I believe. Um, but it's just obviously some of us struggled and I think this one we ended up leaving this and going back to the end and it turned out I think we had it right like the first time round and yeah it was just it was just weird I don't know. Uh, task 4 was setting up um, NAT, a NAT to one of the routers um, again gives you a couple of instructions like creating a loop a loopback address a loopback interface sorry um, and then just a couple of other instructions and then the last task was adding DHCP to one of the routers um, again telling you which interface to add it on to a couple of instructions a couple of rules to go by um, it was all right it was times at times um, for me the other two people in my group were very very knowledgeable of this stuff I think both of them already worked in the IT um, industry and by the sounds of it, they had experience of networking anyway. So, yeah, it was alright for me. Um, I think the group, I think everyone got all the work done. I don't know the marks for everyone else, obviously, because the teachers or the lecturers not going to tell us all that. Um, we ended up getting full marks, which was great. Um, yeah, it was, it was tough and, but tough, but very, it was tough, but I'm very thankful for doing it because it, you can only sit here and learn so much without actually having hands-on experience, which um, is always the best option in my opinion anyway. Um, it gives you so much more. You can relate so much more to what you're learning when you've done hands-on experience, I believe. Because like, Packet Tracer is good and it obviously does fulfill a very good purpose in helping you understand how topologies work etc 
but to actually get your hands-on experience and physically plugging in and logging into computers and going into the consoles and setting them up and seeing them working in person was very, very, just very helpful. It was, um, I don't know really how to explain it, it was just, it's, it's much better now looking back at the work that I've done and seeing how we can relate, even though that the topology and stuff that we did in that day school was in essence very simple, um, it was still very helpful and I'm thankful I did it. Obviously day school is mandatory for anyone that does this module, um, so if you're wondering like why is it mandatory, do I really have to do it? If you're like me that hasn't had network experience, um, it is extremely helpful. So don't go in with like your head down sort of oh, such a pain in the bum that I have to go and do this. It is very helpful um, and I would recommend it. Obviously I kind of have to do it anyway. <laughs> um, for people that already have networking experience doing this module, it might just be a very quick day for you. Um, the only downside is, is that on the part three of the day, which I'll get into now, that you can only do that after a certain time. So no matter how quickly you get this done, um, you still have to wait for that time, which is annoying, I understand, but it's just one day. It's fairly straightforward. If you have networking experience, you'll probably fly through it. Um, and if you don't, it's very helpful. Um, even if you struggle, I think it'd be very helpful to see you just to get to know the, the to just get to know the equipment. Um, yeah, I think you'd be very thankful for doing it. So part three of the day was um, the end of section in the module, like exam on NatCAD, Nat, 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 NatCAD, NatCAD, I don't know, my mind's gone blank. Anyway, um, if you've done the module, that is split into two on there. There's CNA1 and CNA2. Um, CNA1 and CNA2 both have end of module, end of section exams that you do on Netacad. Um So yeah, that only becomes live on the day school. Uh, don't know whether that is because um, I was on the, the first Saturday of all the day schools. I don't know whether it was accessible for everyone on that time or whether it was just accessible for the people that had day school on that day. I don't know. But it was just it was like, if you've done part one, you know what it's like. It's just going over the 10 chapters that you've done asking you various questions. I think there was about 50 questions. Um, they're all multiple choice um, or different sort of activities like linking different things to different things. It's very good. Um, plus side on that end of module exam, from what the lecturers said, that it is very, very unlikely that they'll do a um, packet tracer assessment on that end of module assessment simply because it is meant to be done at day schools and if you are in a day school it is hard to because of their network set up the schools um, sometimes it's very hard to get um, to have access for the packet tracer to sync online to Netacad. obviously at home it's very straightforward but because they have so many permissions etc it's it's very it can be a pain the lecturer said so it's very unlikely we didn't have a packet tracer practical and he said it's very unlikely that he would although you just can't guarantee it um, so I would definitely go in comfortable with packet trace at least and then like I say you should be alright anyway so that was the full day as soon as you got that um, end of module assessment done um, you could leave so you don't have to wait for the full thing you get an hour and a half to do it um, if you're done in 20 minutes you can leave after 20 minutes you know you it's, as soon as you're done, you're done. Um, uh, yeah. Also, the day school, for anyone who is wondering, it, is, it basically works out with like the majority of your EMA as well. So again, it is mandatory. Definitely do go. Don't just think, I don't need it. it can't be that mandatory. It is um, the 30 mark assessment is literally 30 marks of your EMA. And the end of module assessment I believe is another 30 marks worth of your EMA so 60 marks out of 100 on just what you do on the day school um, 
So yeah, don't just think, I don't need it. Um, I'm gonna go and just sod it, it'll be fine. Okay, no, go. <laughs> go, it'll be very thank you just go get it done in one day, easy. Um, and then, like I say, year mate is pretty, pretty much, well, you've done half of it. And then the other two parts, for this year anyway, again, this isn't helping anyone. In particular, of course, anyone who was on the course now can see the EMA and probably is already working on it as I am. Uh, one is simply one question for 20 marks is describe RIP v2 and compare it to another interprot inter protocol design thing. I can't remember the bloody words. And then um, the second part is a packet tracer activity where you there is it looks like it's set up properly but there's some issues and you basically have to go in to each device and set it up. I haven't done that part actually yet, but I've done the RIP v2 thing. Um, but I haven't done the packet tracer yet. Obviously got to the end of May, so I've got plenty of time. But yeah, that was my experience with day school. Um, again, that's for TM257. Don't know if that's a similar experience for everyone. Um, I know everyone did the same tasks. Um, if anyone's wondering, the lecturer that we did, that we had, was someone who worked at the school, um, who has been Cisco certified for many, I think he'd said he'd been Cisco certified for 20 years or so. Although I think it, I think his certification had expired, but he had been doing it for like 20 odd years and obviously been doing day schools with Open University. He didn't say how long he'd been doing that, but he says he has done multiple day schools with Open University. So was obviously quite knowledgeable. Um, so yeah, um, like I say, from my experience, the lecturer was very knowledgeable. I presume all lecturers in the day school are Cisco certified or have been Cisco certified. Otherwise, it's kind of you'd, you'd wonder why they're doing the day school if they weren't. But yeah, they should be. So I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I've got a couple more videos planned. One will be after I've finished everything because it's going to be my in-depth year two review. Um, I did a year one review. But looking back on it, I didn't really, I didn't really go in depth that much. This one's going to be a lot more in depth. Um, so yeah, that's coming at the end of the year. And then another video I've got planned up is, well, I don't know. I think about, I think about doing it, whether or not I do it or not. I don't know. But if you've got any other ideas for videos that you want me to do, or anything that you want me to say, or like explain my point of view from, uh, then please let me know in the comment section. Um, I'm a computer and IT student, I'm in year two, uh, doing three year, year two modules and one year one module, MST124, TM257, TM255 and TT284. Um, so if you've got any questions on those modules, maybe you're starting in October, you want to know what they're like, then just let me know in the comment section and I will get back to you as soon as I can or I will create a video on it if needed be. So, hope you enjoyed, um, please like, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next video, in a bit.